Oh, okay. October 21st. Hoop. Hoop. There it is. Sorry. This is crap all over the floor. Crap all over the floor. Can y'all hear me? You ready? Okay. Ernie McCalson. I totally slaughtered that. We are ready. Y'all are ready. Tell me you're ready. I want to see. Just say we are ready. I'm ready. Or, you know, the little thumbs up is getting tired, y'all. Come on now. Yeah. All right. There you go. Yes. Roscoe Earl. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to wait one more minute as we uh, populate the landscape here. As the, as the party comes in the front door, I'll wait one more minute. Hope y'all are doing all right. Red eye? I have a red eye? What is that? Casey underscore Matthews underscore artist. Did you fly in on a red eye in order to make it to your phone for this? Oh, you meant ready. <laughs> I never, I never claimed to be the sharpest. I never claim claimed to be the sharpest tool in the shed, but uh, that one took me a minute. You know, it takes me a while to get it together. I'm not totally playing with a full deck until about high noon, anyway. <clears throat> um, thank you very much. Uh, I love your work so much. Thank you, uh, Erdemilialson. Erdemilialson. Okay. Ready equals red eye. Got it. Took me a second there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wait just about another 20 seconds. 20, 30 seconds because it just seems like we're getting a little surge of people popping in. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right. Okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right. Here we... Cosmo Pillow, hello, I have no job. So I eat chocolate and it helps. Hey, that's uh, I guess that's a good uh, philosophy there. Unemployed eating eating chocolate. That's a great way to move through life, I guess. Not really, but whatever. We'll talk about that another time. Um, uh, everyone, reach out to Cosmos Pillow. C O S M O S P I L L O W. I think they need some uh, some life coaching, some 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 advice about uh, how to move through the world in a more positive, productive way. This this individual is eating chocolate and uh, unemployed. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. A lot of people here. Great. Okay. So here's the deal. A couple of things really quickly. First, I want to. Um, point out I have I have it here I have a brand new print that is available on my website can you see that it's a new print new limited edition G clay print of a painting called tearing down tearing down the barricade right if you go to howardsherman.com click on available prints that one is available limited edition and then this one has been up for a little while really great limited edition prints um i'm not going to take them out of the plastic i think you can get the idea both of these are at uh you need me to take them out of the plastic you get the idea say i get the idea or please take them out of the plastic but um anyway so there are these two limited edition prints there aren't that many of them they're signed 
uh, G clay prints. They are available on my website. If you go to howardsherman.com, click on available prints and you can buy them there. Okay. So, uh, prints for sale. There's other, there's other works on paper for sale on the shop page that have been up for a while. But uh, those are under a different tab. It's, if you go to howardsherman.com, it's available prints. Okay, click on available prints. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to do is, um, so I actually got questions this week. I got a lot of questions this week and I appreciate that. Um, but w I got some questions um, that I wanna talk, I don't wanna answer the questions, I'm gonna talk about the questions for a minute. Um, and I've gotten questions like this before. They're professional practices questions. I get lots of questions, even live during this deal here and emails and stuff. And people want all kinds of specific help about certain, certain professional practices. And quite frankly, I just don't have the time to get into that right now. Um, there are a lot of them are lengthy and they're specific. And there's quite frankly, there's some great people on the internet who do that stuff more comprehensively than me. It's not necessarily free, but you're either gonna, you know, you're gonna get it from them, or it's the kind of thing you'd also get if you were in a uh, an MFA program, going to graduate school. A lot of graduate, a lot of art schools have it, not just for MFAs, but maybe even for some BFAs. There's like a professional practices class if you're in art school, but then you can also find that stuff uh, online very comprehensively and I'm just not going to get into that here. It's too much and quite frankly, I already make myself a little crazy um, by taking, feeling like I'm spending a lot of time on, 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 on this, but I'm doing it anyway because I want to help. So having said that though, um, uh, I do have time right now for individual uh, critiques. If you want to email me, I'll be happy to send you information if you email me about that. And it might be the kind of thing we could touch on, even though I I generally tend to spend a lot of time on those focus on the artist's work. But if if I feel like we can make make the time to do it, I'll sometimes ask questions. I'll, I'll help them with stuff like that as best I can. And when I say professional practices, I'm talking about, um, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about like, uh, how do I work on my career? How do I make money? How do I um, uh, essentially, it's just lots of business questions and pragmatic issues regarding how to handle, handle their studio practices, not necessarily things that are related to your creative experience. And, um, you know, it's, it, I, I mean, like I mentioned a few posts ago, someone on here decided to take a take an edible and send me like 30 or 40 questions, mostly like professional practices stuff. And there's just no way I can handle all that. And quite frankly, you know, if, if the person's good, they should be paid for, for that kind of help, you know, I think. Um, anyway, that's that. So uh, we will have a short one today. Actually, this one is all about questions and answers. And I did drill through some emails and I got some questions and I'm going to answer them. So this one's a little, this one's a little bit different. There's not one um, overarching topic, but people were curious. And so I'm going to shake it up. There are people out there who are taking the time to watch. So I'm going to shake it up and answer these questions. Okay. That I thought might, may, will hopefully be useful to you. Okay. So Ann Smith sent me a question. She asks, how do I progress with each new work? Do I have a thought process before I start? Okay, and so here's the deal. I, I say this, um, and I think to a certain extent it's true, the plan is to have as little plan as possible before I start each new work so I can kind of surprise myself. But the reality of that is when you're working at anything every day, whether you're playing, um, you know, football or you're painting or you're swimming or you're knitting a sweater or you're whatever, brewing beer, whatever it is, there are certain um, tools in your tool belt that become part of, they become natural, they become part of who you are and how you do things. And you pull out those tools and you use those tools over and over and over again. So, 
Uh, and they're both physical tools, but they're also more importantly, mental tools, which you would call a thought process. And this is why when an artist makes a body of work, there's a continuity amongst the entire, from piece to piece to piece, there is a sort of continuity there. It's because you can't really escape yourself and you can't escape your thoughts, even if you're trying really hard to change one painting, you know, make one thing look very different than the next thing look very different than the next thing. Does that make sense? So I progress by just showing up. So answer your first question and I progress by showing up every day and just working and not thinking too much about it, just working. And um, you come, I come up for air at the end of a week, the end of a month, the end of a year, and I've made progress both in the way the work has changed or how it looks, but also with the, the, the maybe the, hopefully the quality and definitely the quantity of what I've made. So I think I answered that pretty well. Um, and do so, yes, I think I have a do I so the next one was do I have a thought process before I start? Uh, yes, everyone's got a thought process before they start. It's part of I'm not a brain doctor, but that's there, it's unavoidable to have a thought process before you start. So I hope that that answered your questions. I, I want to say I think that people, most people, um, get get too hung up on all of these um, pontificating about all of um, uh, these um, uh, navel-gazing ideas, quite frankly. And I, and I know that being an artist, and I, am, I myself am um, totally guilty of this. I mean, part, it's not guilt. Uh, what am I trying to say? Part of the process is navel-gazing. Part of the process is sitting and staring and, um, and thinking, you know. I mean, that's all part, that's all part of it, but um, there are too many people out there who get too preoccupied with that and they don't get shit done. They don't get anything done. You gotta get it done. You gotta show up every day. You gotta get it done. Stop thinking so much about, um, you know, stop thinking so much about, stop thinking about your thinking or how you're thinking and just start working. That's what I say, you know? And I'm glad I answered that question. I'm glad I kind of meandered off a little bit more and unpacked it a little bit more because it turns into a bigger idea. I, um, there are too many romantic cliches and memes and all this other crap out there to distract you. And in the end, you got to get it done, you know, and the way you're going to, the way you're going to grow and learn and quite frankly, change your thought process is by actually making, making the work, you know, okay. Did that help? If you don't think it helped, let me know. If you do, let me know. I'm a big boy, I can take it, because I am here to I am here to help. That's why I'm doing these, okay? Uh, okay, so Carolyn Barrett asked, well, it's kind of a lot of questions too. Every question, the funny thing is I get a question, but it's actually multiple questions in one, okay? So Carol Carolyn asks, do you title before you begin? Do you title your work before you begin, during the creation, or after you've completed an artwork? If you title your work during or before its creation, does that title influence or change the outcome? And is that limiting or freeing to you? Okay, I um, I, I do all of the above. I I keep a running list of titles. Uh, I put together words that. Um, I think are interesting. I pull things from song lyrics. I read a lot, a little bit of a news junkie. I pull, um, I, the New York Times is really well written, whether people like like it or not, it's very well written. And there's a lot of good things there just in your plain old newspaper. You don't have to go to some super big novel. Um, so I also have had a longstanding interest in, in, in language simply because I came out of a cartooning background where I was doing a daily comic strip in a previous life and I spent a lot of time writing jokes and just writing lines and getting things kind of tight that way and I still write a lot obviously I'm on Instagram every day uh, writing posts right so I have an interest in language and I have an interest in getting snappy titles going I keep a list sometimes the t I have the title in mind before I start 
Sometimes I have the title in mind during, and sometimes I have the title in mind after. Once in a while, a title will influence a piece, but most of the time it's afterwards. And sometimes the titles have a lot to do with the work in a very specific way. And sometimes the titles have nothing to do with the work. Um, and I can kind of, I can get away with that because I say so. So, um, what else can I say about titles? I think that another thing too, is I just get tired of seeing artwork titled untitled, you know, and I don't think that titling things, while it might guide the viewer in a nominal way, as some people would argue, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. I think that half the time people don't remember the titles and they don't read the the little, uh, they don't read the language around the image uh, until afterwards or as an afterthought anyway, which sucks for me because I spent a lot of time crafting really interesting titles and I, and I do find it really important in and of itself, even if it doesn't relate directly to the artwork. So titles aren't limit, aren't necessarily limiting or freeing to me. I just like coming up with interesting titles and, um, you know, I don't, I, if they, if they affect your interpretation of the painting, okay, fine. And if not, that's okay too. Um, so I think that that, I think that that, that was that. Um, anyway, I will take, I will take one or two really quick questions and then we'll call it, we'll call it a day. If I can find a couple of good ones, let me scroll back, scroll back through. Mine.incus. I'm kind of rude. People are only interested and you shouldn't be putting them down. Okay. Well, I don't think I'm being rude. And if it bothers you, you can unfollow. Uh, Mind.incus. Okay. Any other questions? Let me scroll through. Anything else? Is that it? Do you have any other questions about titles or about thought process? I know it takes a second. I t I'm not the best at this. I'm a little bit all thumbs and um, when it comes to this, Nope. Okay, this is kind of good. This is good. Nicholas, uh, Nicholas, Suspedes. Uh, How do you start sketching into a new canvas? Okay. Uh, as, uh, well, the only. How do I start? Well, I'll just say I, I use a lot of vine charcoal. If that helps, uh, I use a lot of vine charcoal. Um, and then, you know, I'll sketch into them at various stages of the process. It's not necessarily starting with a sketch with vine, but for like sketching, I generally use a lot of vine. And sometimes I'll even use a marker and then, you know, I can always paint it out. And then, um, Sokaras art, are your paintings done fairly quickly or over the course of some days? Uh, they take a long, they take a lot longer than uh, the bigger paintings take a lot longer than you would think. They're done over days or weeks or months. And I, I tend to work on a couple different things at the same time. Um, and then Akanlu08, how do you decide colors? Um, a very intuitively and very impulsively but I generally have certain sort of colors I gravitate to, and you can sort of see it again and again and again as you look at as you look at the at the work even on the website. You see tangerine, you see black, you see white, you see hot pink, um, you see turquoise. So anyway, um, I think that that's going to be it. Uh, thank you for taking the time to show up. And I appreciate the emails. Please email your questions. 
And once again, I'll show it one more time. We got a new, a new print available. So you can grab that if you go to um, howardsherman.com and click on available prints, okay? Anyway, thank you, and um, we will talk again soon. Send me, email me your questions. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.